Hallo und Willkommen, ich bin's MK3 und wie ihr seht, seht ihr jetzt nichts im Hintergrund, sondern hört nur die Musik von Deus Ex The Human Revolution, denn das ist die letzte Folge, wo ich quasi nur die jeweiligen Enden, also die Outros sozusagen auch des Spiels behandle, beziehungsweise ich zeig's ja einfach und halt dazu die Klappe sonst großartig noch. Und ja, das erste Ende ist das, wie gesagt, was ich mir ausgesucht habe. Und danach kommen die drei alternativen Enden, die, wo man sich halt einer der Fraktionen sozusagen für entscheidet. Und dann gibt es noch das ganz lange, der Credit-Abspann. Wer den überlebt und sich mal den Komplett reinzieht, sieht sogar noch eine kleine versteckte Szene ganz, ganz gegen Ende. Und dann gibt es noch gegen, äh, ganz, ganz zum Schluss noch den letzten Schmankerl, nämlich die Intro-Musik, wenn man so will, von Deus Ex 1. Und mehr muss ich auch gar nicht sagen. Bis die Tage und tschö. Danke fürs Zusehen. If you do this, the world will be left with questions and may never reach a consensus. Are you sure this is your choice? We have little time left, Adam. And might I say, it has been a pleasure. <lacht> Do I trust mankind to save itself? That's what Eliza was asking. The truth is, I don't know. After everything I've seen, all the fighting and the chaos around me, I only know what I want to believe. Somehow, human decency will triumph. These past few months, I've faced many life-threatening situations. I could have given up many times, but my need to know the truth, to uncover the secrets that others were hiding, and to survive, forced me to keep on going. Most of the time, I tried to keep my values in mind, knowing my actions did not have to harm others. I held on to my humanity resisting the urge to abuse power or resources in order to meet my goals. And in the end, I got the job done. But does this mean I have the right to choose for everyone? No. Because it isn't up to me. It isn't up to Darrow, Sarah, or Taggart either. Ordinary men and women will have to decide together what course mankind should take. The kind of people who time and time again have picked and chosen the future in highly practical ways. Slowing change when it's negative, speeding it up when it's good. Can they do it again? I don't know. But I do know I'm not about to let anyone in this station, myself included, stand in their way. If you do this, The focus of hatred may shift to those responsible for unleashing biological warfare, leaving corporations free to experiment with human evolution. Are you sure this is your choice? So be it then. Sarif was right about one thing. It's in our nature to want to rise above our limits. Think about it. We were cold, so we harnessed fire. We were weak, so we invented tools. Every time we met an obstacle, we used creativity and ingenuity to overcome it. The cycle is inevitable. But will the outcome always be good? I guess that will depend on how we approach it. These past few months, I was challenged many times. But more often than not, Didn't I try to keep morality in mind, knowing that my actions didn't have to harm others? Time and time again, didn't I resist the urge to abuse power and resources simply to achieve my goals more swiftly? In the past,
past, we've had to compensate for weaknesses, finding quick solutions that only benefit a few. But what if we never need to feel weak or morally conflicted again? What if the path Saraf wants us to take enables us to hold on to higher values with more stability? One thing is obvious. For the first time in history, we have a chance to steal fire from the gods. To turn away from it now, to stop pursuing a future in which technology and biology combine, leading to the promise of a singularity, would mean to deny the very essence of who we are. No doubt the road to get there won't be bumpy, hurting some people along the way. But won't achieving the dream be worth it? We can become the gods we've always been striving to be. We might as well get good at it. If you do this, the unadulterated truth in Darrow's confession may well convince mankind to cast all science and technology aside, to ensure that future generations grow up free and whole. Are you sure this is your choice? So be it then. Albert Einstein said, Technological progress is like an axe in the hands of a pathological criminal. It took me a while, but I finally see his point. How often have we chased the dream of progress only to see it perverted? More often than not, haven't the machines we built to improve life shattered the lives of millions? And now we want to turn that dream on ourselves to fundamentally improve who we are. Experience has shown me how dangerous that can be. How many times in the Call of Duty did I almost fall into the trap of taking shortcuts, abusing my abilities or the resources at hand? I resisted. Barely at times, because I valued human lives and considerations. Can I truly despise others who fall? Technology offers us strength. Strength enables dominance, and dominance paves the way for abuse. Darrow understood this. He knew that using technology to become something more than we are risks losing our ability to love, aspire, or make moral choices. The very things that make us human. It also risks giving some men the power to make others what they choose, regardless of the cost to human dignity. The suffering Darrow inflicted is not the end of the world. It is merely the seed for change. And change never comes without pain. If you do this, first-hand experience with corporate negligence on such a grand scale may convince mankind to enact harsh restrictions on human enhancement research. Are you sure this is your choice? So be it then. Freedom. To those who don't have it, it's more valuable than gold. But where should it start and end? We humans often think we have the right to expand, absorb, convert, or possess anything we need to reach our dreams. But time and time again, hasn't this led to conflicts with others who essentially believe the same thing? Looking back on the challenges I faced, 
at the way I often resolve them, I realize morality can become our saving grace. Most of the time, didn't I try to keep my values in mind, knowing how my actions would affect others? More often than not, I resisted the urge to abuse power and resources simply to reach my goals more swiftly. I managed to hang on to my humanity. But the temptation to ignore it was always there. It's that temptation that so worries Taggart. He's not afraid of freedom. He's afraid of the chaos that erupts when individuals have nothing but morality to constrain them. He wants us to regulate enhancement technologies because he fears all that power without limits, without guardrails to keep us from abusing it. Absolute freedom is no better than chaos. Society needs laws and regulations to protect it. So if the men and women behind Taggart need to work in the shadows, pulling strings to enable us to head in a safe direction, will supporting them be all that bad? If they're as wise as Taggart says, how bad will their leadership be? I just hope they stand by what they say.
You worry too much, Morgan. There's nothing we can't manage, given time. She's here. I have to cut this short. Keep going through the wreckage. Maybe we'll find something we can use for the Morpheus Initiative. Come in. Dr. Reed. We're so pleased you decided to join us. Where else could I go? No regrets, my dear. As Ariadne told Theseus before he entered the Minotaur's Labyrinth, always forward, never left or right. You'll be very interested in our current project. We're breaking new ground. Yes, the nanite virus chimera is quite intriguing. I'm looking forward to seeing the hybrid project up close, Mr. Page. And so you shall. But please, call me Bob. <laughs>